where some call him extraordinary, some call him provocative. But no matter what you call him, there is no doubt that Jean-Paul Gaultier is extremely creative and a genius at presenting something truly unique at every season. Gaultier has always been a loose cannon. Since his debut in the mid-70s, he has blurred the boundaries of performance art and fashion, sending live turkeys as Christmas gifts, lining military jackets with mink, and recycling tin cans into bracelets. I am the problem. Yusai traveled to Paris for this exclusive interview with the enfant terrible of couture. <laughs> Jean-Paul, your parents were accountants. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? How did you get this genius? I don't know first if it is genius, but what I can uh, say is that maybe they were a counter, but they didn't like what they were doing. Maybe I felt that. I remember that my uh, father was a little doing some painting on, on, on Sunday, you know, but small painting like that. So he liked drawing, so maybe it helped me. But the major thing was uh, uh, my grandmother. Yes, 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 Marie, right? Marie Garabé, which was uh, somebody very special. Mm -hmm. She was like a nurse, and she was like doing like some massage, you know, magnetism. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, like a faith healer. She had like old antique clothes, you know, uh -huh. and she was um, giving advice to her client. Giving about beauty or about, about beauty? He, he, she, she was a fortune teller, right? Yeah, also she was a fortune teller. Mm -hmm. Un, deux, trois, quatre, you will yeah. be married. <laughs> One, two, three, four, <laughs> divorced. <laughs> so I was like listening to all that, but it make me understand how, how you look is important for your life, you know, and for your relation with the other people, you know. It was that, I think, that make me into the spirit of, of how the importance of how you look, how you dress, how you have your hair done, how you have to represent yourself and you can express yourself by your representation. The enfant terrible of French fashion started designing clothes at the age of six. His parents and his grandmother encouraged him to pursue his passions. Before I wanted to be like a cooker, baker, <laughs> a chef. because I like to eat. A yeah. baker. <laughs> yeah, baker. <laughs> After I wanted to do like a show, but like Folie Berger. Oh. I liked uh, because I saw at the TV. The TV was very important. My grandmother let me see everything, even the things that were prohibited uh, for children, you know. Uh -huh. uh, I saw it, you know, I saw everything. <laughs> So one night, I saw one show, it was the opening of the new show of the Folie Berger. Uh -huh. And I saw all those girls with the fishnet and with the, the feathers, costumes. the strass, the diamonds, everything, oh, all yeah. the costumes. And I love that. So I said, I should like to do that. So I did it on my uh, teddy bear. A teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> and it helped me to do all my uh, experiences, let's say, about with, like clothes and... Uh, I put him first hair. He became human having hair. Uh, first he was blonde, as me, almost. After he was like leisurely, like bluish, because my grandmother, I used the same product she was using for her hair, uh -huh. because I was doing also the hair for my grandmother. Uh -huh. So, in some way, my teddy bear became my grandmother. <laughs> so I put him the first cone bra. Oh. <laughs> so he yeah, became yeah, a yeah. woman, you oh, know, in oh, some yeah. way. <laughs> it was a trans bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Transsexual bear. <laughs> <laughs> Transsexual bear. So it's a reflect of all my experiment, you know, let's say. Jean-Paul's creativity has been transferred from his teddy bear to today's most celebrated models and glitterati. Still drawn to his childhood love of all things dramatic, his work is inspired by people, places, and stories that are out of the ordinary. When you design, what kind of a woman do you have in mind? It's not one special, it's many different. And I am very careful about the choice of my model because there is some on which I can, I can work, on the other one I cannot work so much. Like I what mean, kind like of model can you work with? And some, what I should I? say some that are like um, particular. Mm -hmm. By the way, of color of hair, like reddish hair, mm. because they help me. They help me about like to mix the color of the clothes, you know, mm. the ones that have like a strong personality in reality. Mm. I quite like some 
extreme <laughs> uh, well, characteristic yeah, I, I people say. with personality. Mm. It can be in a romantic, in a uh, very dramatic, it can be exotic way, in different way, but it has to be special. You know, um, Audrey Hepburn was dressed uh, by Givenchy. Mm -hmm. It seems like that is the favorite subject of Givenchy. Do you mm. have a, a, a favorite person you like to design for? Honestly, it, uh, uh, there is no one. There is as the same, like a different one, you know. Uh, it can be like, uh, for example, like uh, Madonna. <laughs> I was a fan of Madonna since the beginning, you know. And I have the luck like, to work with her and very deeply, you know, and she became a friend. You even did two, two tours? Yes, it one complete when I was uh, alone to do it. It was like the Blonde Mission Tour first, which was uh, one of my best experiences. It was fabulous, you know. She was using all the elements of seduction. A potential of seduction of a woman to use that to be stronger than men and in reality she is stronger than men you know but she used that you know like to not only seduce men but also to make them to be uh, a servant <laughs> in some way you know I think she is like a, I always felt uh, being educated by women that women were stronger than men and more clever than men that definitely it's because maybe it's more difficult for them because Apparently, the power comes from men, you know. They apparently are strong, in reality, they are very weak. So, I think that Madonna understood very well that, and she represents exactly the post, uh, uh, comment dit-on ça? Uh, liberation. Liberation of the woman, you know. Having the power uh, herself, by herself, but with the element that were refusing the, the one of the first liberation, you know. Mm -hmm. So, it's the second li li liberation that she did. Gautier began his career in Paris in the early days of women's liberation. He broke into the business while still in high school, landing an after-school job for the fashion house Pierre Cardin. When his position was cut back due to overstaffing, he migrated to Jacques Estorel, where he was trained in the craft of couture and gained the skills necessary to move on. Eventually, he migrated back to Pierre Cardin for a stint at their Asian division. You know, you are really French. <clears throat> You know, we, we always refer to you as a French designer, right? Mm -hmm. Because you always have lived in uh, Paris, right? Yeah. Around yeah. Paris. Yeah. But there is one little period of time you actually lived in Asia. Can you imagine? Yes. Can you imagine? Tell in me. Philippine. <coughs> it was in Philippines. And I went there, and I worked there, and I did even some clothes for Imelda Marcos. Can oh you imagine? Yes, yes, yeah, we're fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Coming up next, Jean-Paul Gaultier's imagination runs wild. <laughs> I imagine that I have only bakers, so I do clothes in bread. <laughs> <laughs> 